So we know that the number of variables in a linear system of equations tells us the dimension of the space in which our solution set for that system is going to reside. We also know that the number of equations in a linear system tell us the number of hyperplanes that we have to try to intersect in order to form that solution set inside of that space. But what does the number of pivots in a linear system tell us either about the system itself or ideally about the nature of the solution set to that system? In this video we're going to look at some simple examples from the 2 by 2 case, two variables, two equations, to help to set the table. And then we want to push it a little bit further to look at in the 3 by 3 case what is it telling us and try to extract a generalization to figure out what the number of pivots in a linear system means. Let's keep our feet firmly planted on the ground by beginning with a 2 by 2 example. So two variables, meaning that my solution set is going to live in two dimensional space, i.e. the xy plane if you like, and two equations, meaning that I'm going to look for my solution set to be the intersection of two hyperplanes in two dimensions. And in two dimensions, remember, hyperplane, one dimension less, means a line. So this is the most familiar setting in which to do linear algebra. In the xy plane, trying to find intersections of two lines. So we'll get started by considering x minus 2y equals negative 7. And that is a single hyperplane, a single straight line inside of the xy plane. Because the right-hand side of this equation is not 0, that line does not pass through the origin. But it's all right. If I add a second equation into my system, let's say I add 2x plus 3y equals 7, that adds a second hyperplane onto my xy plane, the blue line in this case. And the solution set of this linear system is just going to be the intersection point, if there is one, of those two hyperplanes. And there does happen to be such an intersection point, namely the point negative 1, 3. So we know that this is the geometric setting for this particular 2 by 2 linear system. So what does that look like when we actually do the work of finding a solution to that system using the tools that we have in linear algebra so far? Well, the first thing we would do, naturally, is take the system and write it in its augmented matrix form, and then use elementary row operations to row reduce it as far as possible. And if I do that all the way to its end conclusion, I'm going to end up in this example with a row reduced matrix which on the left hand side of the augmentation bar has a 1 on each of the diagonal entries and zeros everywhere else. So remember, I'm going to use blank spaces in my augmented matrix to indicate where the zeros are, just to make it easier to read. And in this reduced row echelon form, we find out that there are two pivots in my matrix. Remember, a pivot is an entry which only has zeros underneath and to the left of it. So this one right here is a pivot. And this one right there is also a pivot. So that means that there are two columns in my augmented matrix that have pivots in them. And as we've already talked about, that means that the variables that correspond to those columns are both what we call basic or bound variables. That means that there are no variables in my system which are free, which are not bound variables. And so in this particular system, all of our variables are basic, meaning that they all have their values determined completely by the system and not by any free choice of whim of myself or the mathematical universe or a person on the street handing me a number, right? That the values of all of my variables, both x and y, are completely determined by the system, which means that my system has a unique solution, namely that intersection point, negative 1, 3. That's the one place where these two hyperplanes meet, so that point is our unique solution to this linear system. But that is a column viewpoint, right? That's considering what the pivots tell us about the variables, because it's the columns that correspond to the variables. But one of the really important facts about linear algebra is that every column that has a pivot also corresponds to a row that has a pivot, because of how we define pivots in the first place. They have all zeros underneath them, but also all zeros to the left of them. And so every pivot is not only the only pivot in its column, it's also the only pivot in its row. So we can also understand this statement at the level of rows. I have two pivot columns, but I also have two pivot rows. So what does that mean about the equations that made up my original system? Well, if we go back to the graphical picture, 
Let's imagine that we start out, as we did a minute ago, with just the first row, just the first equation, x minus 2y equals negative 7. Just this red line, this red hyperplane, if you like, in the xy plane. If that were the only equation in my system, then this entire line would also be my solution set, right? Because I would only have one constraint on the variables x and y. And so what I want to think about now is what happens when I add in another equation. In other words, add in another row. What happens in this case, and what can happen more generally if I add in a new row into my system? Well, once I add in the row that corresponds to the equation 2x plus 3y equals 7, now suddenly my solution set goes from this entire red line, which it was before, down to just this one black point, negative 1, 3, the unique solution of this linear system. So somehow, adding the second equation is essential to shrinking the size of my solution set from an entire line full of points down to a single unique point, which is my solution set. And it does that, it manages to do that, because the blue equation, the blue line right here, is somehow giving me new information that the red line could not provide. Right? So both the red line and the blue line are each telling their own independent story in this linear system. And therefore, when they intersect, they can intersect at a common point, because each of them is bringing its own unique information to the table. So what I'll say is that two pivot rows means that both of my equations in this linear system are independent of one another. Each one of them is telling its own story, bringing its own information to this linear system. And so both of those equations are necessary for us to understand the nature of the solution set. Two independent equations geometrically showed up as two lines which are not parallel. If we wanted to, we could find the slopes of these two and find out that the slopes are not equal to one another and so they're not parallel. We can also just look at the, the graph here. These two lines are not parallel, which is why in Euclidean geometry it's possible that they intersect at a unique point. So that's another in the 2x2 two two case interpretation of pivots, is that the pivots are telling me that the two lines which correspond to these equations are not parallel to one another. And because they're not parallel to one another, they have a unique intersection point, which is why we have a unique solution for this particular linear system. So if that's what happens in the 2x2 two two case when I have two pivots, what happens if I don't have two pivots? So let's contrast the example we just looked at with an example where I have two equations and maybe I have fewer than two pivots. So I'm going to begin this example starting with the same first equation that we had before, x minus 2y equals negative 7, this red hyperplane, this red line inside of the xy plane. But now suppose that the second equation that I add in is negative 2x plus 4y equals 28. So if I add that into my graph, we get a very different picture than we had a minute ago. The green line the green hyperplane that corresponds to this equation inside of my two-dimensional xy plane. That green line, apparently, I can zoom out as far as I want to here, there is no point at which that green line intersects with our red line. And that's a very different circumstance than we had a minute ago. Let's take a look at how that different circumstance is borne out in the work that we would have to do to solve this linear system. So x minus 2y equals negative 7 combined with negative 2x plus 4y equals 28 using the tools that we have at our disposal in linear algebra. When we form the augmented matrix, 1 minus 2 minus 7, negative 2, 4, 28, and then we do elementary row operations, first thing I would have done here is multiply this second row by a half, and then I would have added the first row into the second row. But when I do that, what happens is that both of the first two entries in that row end up zeroing out. So I can't zero out this first entry without also simultaneously zeroing out this second entry when I do the elementary row operations. Try it for this system and you'll see why. And so what I lose is I lose the pivot in the second column, equivalently the pivot in the second row, that we had in our first example. And so in my new system I only have one column that has a pivot. So if we go back and reinterpret what that tells me, it tells me that one of my variables, namely the x if we like in this case, because that corresponds to the first column, one of my variables is basic. The other variable, y, is going to be a free variable. Remember what that means. 
That means that the value of x is determined by a free choice of the value of y. So I, or you, or the universe, or someone on the street, gets to pick a value for y, any value they like. And then that value will determine a value for x that will make one point in the solution set to this linear system. Right? We hope, at least. And so that's a very different scenario than we had before. But that information alone isn't enough to give us the whole story. For the whole story, we also need to look at what it tells us about the rows. So we have one pivot column, yes. But again, because every column can only have one pivot and every row can only have one pivot, that means that we only have one pivot row as well. And so only one of the equations in my linear system is telling a unique story, if you like. And the story that the other row is telling is somehow connected, it's related, it's not independent of the story that the other one is telling. And the reason for that in this system is that the second line is parallel to the first line. And so the two stories that they tell in my linear system are very similar to one another. They're not telling their own unique stories the way that our first two equations were when we first looked at the beginning. And so my two lines in this graph are not parallel. That's a reflection of the fact that the two stories are related to one another. They're, they're not independent. And another tenet of Euclidean geometry is that if I have two lines that are parallel, and if there's some positive distance in between the two of them, then those two lines do not intersect at any point. Only one of the lines really kind of matters to the story that the system is telling me. The other one is parallel to, and in this case, does not intersect the first. And if we look at what the row reduced form is telling me, that second row that doesn't have a pivot in it, if we convert it back into equation form, it has no variables in it. It has 0x plus 0y. And so the left hand side is the number 0. The right hand side is the number 7. And since those two are not equal to each other under any circumstance, there is no way for me or for you or for the universe or for the person on the street to choose a value of y that's going to lead to a solution to this system. And so this system has no solution at all graphically because the two lines that are determined by the rows, the equations, do not intersect one another. And so going from two pivots down to one, even in the simple two by two system of equations case, radically changed the nature of the solution set. Because when I had two pivots, I had two lines, two hyperplanes, each of which was telling its own unique story in the system. And therefore, when we intersect them, we ended up getting a unique point, which was the unique solution of my linear system. But when I only had one pivot, there was only one essentially independent story being told by the two equations, because the two lines were parallel to one another. And because they were parallel and they did not overlap one another completely, that also means that there was no intersection. The intersection of those hyperplanes was the empty set. And so there is no value of x and y that satisfy both equations simultaneously. So, so far we're developing this picture that the number of pivots in a linear system tells us a story about independence. It tells us how many of the equations in that linear system tell their own unique story, and in turn, how many variables in that linear system are really going to be participating in being bound for their values by that linear system of equations. We're going to take a look in our next video at some of the options that occur when we ramp it up into the 3x3 system case, and that can kind of give us a hint at what happens in a more general setting.